I would like to thank T Maxi for sending me this story and we are now going across the pond yet again. Now this story kind of reminds me of one that I did last year on a one Otto Warmbier where he went over to I believe it was South Korea or North Korea it was one of them and he tampered with a banner over there that had uh, one of their leaders on it. And man, were they pissed the fuck off when they found out that he tampered with it and pulled it down and did whatever it is that he did with it. Well, he was sentenced to, what was it? It was like over 10 years or something of harsh labor. He didn't last three months. And then by month six or whatever month it was, they sent him back to the States where he later died in a coma. Now, this story right here is kind of echoing the same tone. Now, in this picture to the right, you have two individuals by the name of Lee Furlong, that's the guy, and uh, the woman to the left of him, well, in the image, her name is Brittany Schneider. Yes, that is a woman. Uh, clearly, she is a lesbian. And apparently, they must have been uh, traveling together or they were ran into each other, something like that. But the guy and her decided that it would be a good idea to spray paint graffiti on a, a well-known gate overseas and i believe it happened um in thailand now ironically and lisa just did a video talking about how the, the uh, people of thailand wanted to get rid of black people or they didn't like black people now how ironic that they don't like black people but you have these two white individuals who came over and tampered with something of theirs that they consider to be precious neither one of them are black but i just thought i'd put that out there but anyway the wall has some significant value because they said the wall is 800 years old and they spray painted a message on it that said scouser lee anyway they are extremely offended by it and they say that these individuals can face up to 10 years in prison. This is another case of privilege gone wrong, thinking you can go anywhere you want in the world because you are white and think no one's going to do anything to you. Now, he is from, uh, he is British and she's from Canada. So how they managed to meet up with each other, I'm not entirely sure how that all that happened or maybe they knew each other beforehand. But they tampered with something that was sacred over there, and uh, now they might pay, uh, face the consequences, in which I feel absolutely nothing for them should they get those 10 years in prison. Because let's be real here. You don't go over to someone else's place and just mess with their stuff. You wouldn't go to someone's house and start rearranging their furniture or start tampering with their stuff without asking for permission. But it's that ego and thinking you can go anywhere you want and do whatever you want and think that it's going to be okay you think because of the stuff that you do in your nation is going to fly everywhere else and that's where a lot of these white individuals have the game fucked up but it is what it is so if they had to face 10 years in that prison i don't know what they're going to have to deal with because if Otto warmberry had to face uh hard labor i wonder what they're going to do i wouldn't want to spend a night in jail here let alone spend a night in a prison overseas somewhere where I don't know the language I don't know what the hell is going on or what is in store for me or how in the hell I'm gonna get out of here because then they get thrown in jail now they're gonna have to work it out with their government of wherever they're from she's gonna have to work it out with the Canadian government he's gonna have to work it out with a Brit with the British government to see if they can come to an arrangement to get them out of that prison and that's a lot to, to deal with. Like I said, look to Otto Warmbier as an example. <laughs> he spent all those months over there in Korea. And they were debating back and forth whether or not they was going to let him out or things of that nature. And when they finally did, the only reason I think he got out was because he was in a bad shape. He was in bad condition to the point where he was of no more use to those Koreans. So they said, well, we can't deal with someone who's half past dead anyway. He's going to die. So let's just send him back over to his nation to die. And that's exactly what happened because he only lasted maybe about a month or so, if that, in, in a coma and he died. So 
Who knows what's in store for them? I don't know how the Thai run their prison, like sorry, run their prisons, but it looked like they probably don't play over there just by the way that the people over there are like standing. And you can tell they are probably mad because you don't just go over to somebody's place and mess with something that is sacred. But that shows you when a people has something that is longstanding in tradition and you protect it, when people or outsiders or invaders try to come and tamper with it, then th there's going to be a problem. But remember also the people of Thailand or a vast majority of them say they don't like black people either. So I thought it was so it was ironic and funny that it was two white people and not two black people that did this to their 800 year wall. Y'all let me know what you think down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. The links will be in the description. I'll talk to you in the next one.